Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jason West. I'm America's Healer, coming at you with 107 years of clinical experience through my great-grandfather, grandfather, dad, and then myself. I've been a number one best-selling author. I've had a national radio show. And the purpose of this program is to tell you about some new breakthroughs about Hashimoto's. And when I say new breakthroughs, we've been using it for decades, but a lot of people don't know of all of their options and considerations for Hashimoto's because there's more to it than just saying here is a thyroid hormone. It's what is the problem? How can we help to get rid of some of those triggers that are making your body think that the thyroid is a bad guy and, and attacking it? There's a lot more to it than just saying here, take two of these and call me tomorrow. So our program that what we're talking about is literally on Hashimoto's. I'm excited to share this with you. So let's jump right into it and talk about the most important gland in the body. Of course, you can make the argument that it is the thyroid. Maybe it's the pituitary. Maybe it's the hypothalamus. But think about this for a second. The thyroid is kind of the master gland for the body. It helps to regulate literally just about everything. Temperature, metabolism. It tells the adrenals how to function. It has a direct impact on the heart. It really is important for uh, gonadal health, which means testicular health for males and also ovary, ovarian health for females. And, and literally, one of the reasons why we get hot flashes is because when the female body starts to stop producing those different hormones in the pelvis, and then the thyroid and the adrenals and the pituitary, they help to take over. And then all of a sudden the ovaries are like, well, I'm not quite done. And it produces more and you get hot flash. Well, the, the problem is the thyroid. Now, this isn't a lecture about hot flashes and infertility and PCOS and everything like that. This is about what, how the thyroid can have an influence on that and what happens when it gets wonky. So we have a normal thyroid that's literally just a little bit bigger than a walnut right above the larynx or the voice box. And then if it gets too big, it's a goiter. And then also there's some specific ways to help the thyroid to work better. So just kind of reviewing some basic things here. The thyroid hormone regulates metabolism, which literally turns food into energy without enough energy. Your body can't operate normally and it begins to slow down. And so Hashimoto's disease, what it does is affects the thyroid gland. It has a couple different names. Hashimoto is the most common or thyroiditis, autoimmune thyroiditis. And that thyroid gland that regulates all of the hormones that regulate virtually your body's metabolic functions, it's a type of, of trick that happens. And what occurs is the body thinks, hey, that's not supposed to be there. And it goes into attacks it. Most common question I get asked when I explain it that way is the people say, well, what was the signal? And that's exactly right. If we can figure out why the imbalance occurred and go after the imbalance and get it normalized, then what happens is a lot of times those conditions resolve. And so even though it's considered to be an autoimmune disorder, I'm not sure if I believe that. Stick with me and I'll tell you why I think that as we go through the presentation. Um, Hashimoto's, it's a little bit more common in women than men, usually between 30 and 50. It does have a tendency to run in families, although it's not hereditary. And when people have autoimmune disorders like thyroid Hashimoto's, there's also, it's not unlikely to have liver conditions or B12 deficiency or uh, diabetes, lupus, Adson's disease, ankylosing spondylitis. Like there's so many different things that can be, happen when you have a confused immune system. And so it's really common, about five people out of 100, so obviously 5%. Um, and again, this is where medicine thinks it's an autoimmune disease, it's attacking your body. And I would just make the statement of this. I don't think one day that your body said, hey, you know what? I don't like my thyroid. I'm going to go get rid of it. Or I don't like my liver. I'm going to get rid of my nerves. I, there has to be a signal and in the British Journal of Medical Practitioners, I always quote this in my presentations, my podcasts, my radio shows, and, and presentations. I love this article, 2009, British Journal of Medical Practice says that chronic infections, viral and bacteria, when they get into a gland, they lead to neurodegenerative neurobehavior, psychiatric, autoimmune, and fatiguing illness. So what does that mean? 
literally about every three minutes, the blood is going through thyroid. It's a secondary gland of detoxification. I feel that not only does it have an important part for metabolism, but it also has an important immune system component because you got all of this iodine and in, in normal iodine that's in the thyroid, and it literally helps to purify and cleanse the blood. Well, I feel that there's infections that get caught in the thyroid. And then what happens is the body tries to mount an immune response against the thyroid, excuse me, against the infection, and it accidentally attacks or injures the thyroid tissue. And then what happens is it, it doesn't work right. Now, a lot of the treatment that occurs for Hashimoto's is based on a pharmaceutical approach. I have some other recommendations and suggestions for you to go back and review some of the classic signs of thyroid problems or Hashimoto's metabolism problems, feeling more tired, having no energy, menstrual irregularity for women, uh, constipated, having problems with bowel movements, which by the way, causes all kinds of other problems and sticky blood, which makes the thyroid have to work harder because sticky blood, one of the side effects it, or one of the causes is cellular trauma and constipation causes cellular trauma. Like if your bowels aren't working, like you don't work and it puts more stress on your glands. So no one's associating necessarily cell trauma with thyroid problems, but it's a huge factor. It's a huge player. Thyroid dysfunction from Hashimoto's can lead to sexual dysfunction in men and women, tired Weight gain, feeling cold, joint stiffness, depression, puffy eyes, uh, heavy irregular cycles, difficulty becoming pregnant. It can cause, you know, bradycardia, which is a really slow heart rate. And the way that you see this, at least from workup, is there's a bunch of different tests. I just listed some common ones, the thyroid stimulating hormone, which really isn't measuring if the thyroid's working right. It's telling, is the pituitary up here telling the thyroid down here to regulate uh, T4 is basically what the, the hormone the thyroid produces. There's also, you know, thyroid antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, and an ultrasound. So these are some of the things I like to do to see what where we are on the Hashimoto's spectrum. Not everybody needs an aggressive treatment for Hashimoto's. Um, sometimes it's it's a, a factor or it's relevant. Uh, sometimes we can do some really neat nutritional interventions for Hashimoto's, but for the most part, when doctors see a high TPO or an, and or an altered TSH, they immediately jump to Symphroid or Levothyroxine or Tyrosine or something along those pathways. And what I like to do is to say, look, let's see if we can do this a little bit differently and let's remove the infection. Let's look at some building blocks they call protomorphogen therapy. What protomorphogen is, is literally it's the smallest signaling unit for the body to repair itself. That's one part of protomorphogen therapy. And so it gives your body, hey, this is how you make a healthy thyroid. But here's the other component of this is the protomorphogen therapy, which is basically a, a specific way of getting an organ extract to tell the body to be healthy. It also acts as like a decoy flare. So the example I tell people, if you're flying across the, um, your opponent in war in, with your Air Force and you're going to you know, bomb a strategic objective, the defensive mechanism for the company you're attacking is when you're flying up, they're going to shoot a, a heat-seeking missile at you. And then the pilot's looking at the alarm system. This is, this is basically what happens when you have TPO antibodies. And, and then right before that heat-seek missile hits the plane, the pilot, de you know, does some anti-airstrike, you know, maneuvers and sends out hot phosphorus flares that are hotter than the engine and the missiles go after the hot phosphorus flares. Now, I know that's a simplistic explanation. I've certainly not been in the Air Force or anything. This is just a really good way that is explained to me. And, and those antibodies go after the phosphorus flares. That's part of the proteomorphogen therapy. An advanced treatment called neural therapy where we can actually get it to reset. And I'm going to show you right out of my book right here what this looks like. This is taking a specific type of B vitamin that helps the nerves to open, close, and reset, or basically reset the nervous system control to the thyroid. It's outlined in this textbook called the Neural Manual of Neural Therapy. Uh, you don't have to read it. That's what I'm for. But this book literally explains why it's so important 
to literally get the thyroid to reboot. So the thyroid, what happens is if it starts in a disease state and we don't reboot it, it, it can't literally go back and reset the way it was. If your body was a computer or your thyroid was a computer and we called up tech support and tech support said we need to reset everything, they'd say turn it off and turn it back on. That's what this neural therapy does. It's such an amazing treatment for different types of thyroid conditions. So it's not just a thyroid prescription deficiency disease. There's so many neat and ways to help with Hashimoto's. Diet is a significant factor. Stress is a significant factor. I recommend that people, you know, get rid of anti-inflammatory foods. Let's, let's do some specific testing where we can look at the content structure inside of the cells. You know, a spectra cell test. Let's look at your IgA, your IgG, and your IgM antibodies to see if there's a food uh, trigger that's making too much inflammation and then it's spilling over into an autoimmune component in your body I think that is really significant. So my little list that we have up here is we got to make sure that it's not infection. I think infection is the number one cause of Hashimoto's. We can rebuild the organ with, with protomorphogen therapy. There's a neural therapy reset. There's also some really neat considerations for what's called peptide therapy. So there's a specific type of peptide that helps the thyroid to heal. Peptides are signaling molecules that allow your body to improve function. A classic peptide signaling molecule is insulin. If your body's not making the right and you get to make enough insulin, you can, you can help with getting exogenous insulin. And uh, in type 1 diabetics, guess what? There is a peptide regulator that helps with a thyroid as well. Cleaning up the gland, making it work better, resetting the nerves to the gland. There are some more considerations than just prescriptive therapy and I've seen people really nice improvement. You can check out our video testimonials on our YouTube channel, our Facebook, on our website. It's West Clinic Online. You go right up to the patient success stories and you can see people that we've helped with different autoimmune conditions. So that is a real quick question about what we can do for thyroid problems and autoimmune. I'm your host, of, I'm America's Healer, Dr. Jason West, and we'll see you on the next clinical question on our YouTube channel or Facebook Live. And remember this, you're not your diagnosis. If you treat people getting imbalanced, good things happen. I'll see you guys on the next video.